Everybody, welcome to the Homestead. Glad you're here. We're going to go ahead and talk about some news items today. Number one, about tiny houses. Uh, there was a really interesting article I saw posted over at Business Insider and another one over at the Wall Street Journal talking about how a lot of people who work uh, working remotely now are moving out of the big cities because of the whole Rona. Uh, they are, it's allowing them to work from home. And so if they're working from home, they're like, you know, some of them are thinking, well, why stay in the city? I can live out anywhere. I can live to more suburban or even uh, less urban, even rural areas. And uh, there was an article that came up by the Wall Street Journal that said, uh, these people are probably not going to last out there. They're going to move back to the city eventually. Interesting article. Uh, the comments many times on these articles are even better than the article themselves. So we're going to get into that. Uh, stick around for this. Let's go ahead and jump over to the Business Insider first. And it says, these are the top 10 most popular popular U.S. states for living in a tiny home. And tiny homes that have been the rage the last few years. And there are people out there I've seen in the homesteading community on YouTube who have some strong opinions on this. Um, I've never, I mean, I live my home is just barely less than a thousand square feet. Now, because we added the office space that we're in now for the studio that I'm recording in, it's around 1300 square feet. So not a large home for sure, uh, you know, compared to what m many people have, but um, not tiny either. It's not, not, not considered a tiny home. Uh, but Interesting article here. It starts off, the tiny home movement has captured the hearts of Americans in recent years. Tiny homes are defined as abodes that are under 400 square feet. The movement has picked up steam with many opting for the tiny lifestyle to save money or to be able to travel freely. Sustainable energy use and waste systems are also key drivers, though the tiny home life isn't always as glamorous as it looks. That's true. A 2020 report from home improvement site Home Advisor zeroed in the most on the most popular states for the tiny home life or at least the states with the most active tiny home Instagrammers. Uh, home Advisor uh, scra scraped Instagram for posts tagged with a tiny living hashtag and tagged somewhere else in each state, such as in a city or a restaurant. It also considered the amount of activity the post got through comments and likes. The site didn't factor in posts that didn't have a location tag. Here are the top 10 most popular U.S. states for tiny living, according to Home Advisor. I found this very interesting. Number 10 being Utah. Uh, not a state you usually think about when it comes to tiny homes, but it seems that there are a number of tiny home dwellers in, in Utah. It says Home Advisor found 1,613 photos tagged in Utah are roughly 3% of all the photos scraped by the home improvement website in the U.S. Tiny homeowners are tasked with making sure that zoning ordinances and their desired location allow them to legally live in the small abodes. Uh, that's another big thing. There's a lot of municipalities that do not like tiny homes at all. So you got to do your research on this. According to a 2018 Daily Herald report, Utah was a bit slow to adjust city codes to accommodate tiny, uh, smaller homes. But progress has been made in recent years, and now the state is riding the tiny home train full throttle. Uh, number nine, New York. Um, again, not what I expected. I, I, I always think of New York as very high zoning, very high regulation uh, that would not, it would probably frown on tiny homes, even though it's a very liberal state. Uh, I always think of people who in New York with, you know, especially outside the city, um, you know, who have bigger homes, who love living in, you know, bigger homes. And so I, I just, I didn't think that there would be one, but sure enough, it is the report 1787 photos with the hashtag tiny living in the state of New York state officials recently adopted appendix Q tiny houses, a measure of legitimizing safe building standards for 400 square foot houses on foundations. According to B and B tiny houses, the appendix became law earlier this year. So I guess on foundations and a lot of these people, they want their homes on foundations. Again, having to match up with zoning and regulations in a lot of these places. Uh, North Carolina was a big one here, number eight. Um, and so, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Arizona. Now, I have seen a lot of tiny homes in Arizona. Um, homesteaders really, it seems like a lot of homesteaders gravitate to the desert, which makes no sense to me. I've made videos on this before. It just does not make sense, especially in an off-grid uh, sort of homestead lifestyle. It just... Rain, water, it's got to be so important, and moving to a desert just does. I mean, if you're going to be growing your, a lot of your own food um, and you want variety, I mean, there are some things that grow really well in the desert, some things, but not a lot of things. That's why it's a desert. 
Okay, <laughs> so but yeah, here we go. Uh, number seven, Arizona. About four percent of the total posts scraped in the U.S. were tagged in Arizona, according to Construction Dive. Pima County is a Pima Pima County, which includes the city of Tucson, eased regulations for houses that measured less than 400 square feet in 2016. However, those new regulations didn't include mobile tiny homes. Since then, the state has embraced tiny home villages. I've seen that too. Like you have whole like neighborhoods of tiny homes. Really interesting concept. Um, you know, like minds think together. Birds of a, what's that? Birds of a feather flock together or something like that. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. That's kind of the way it is here where I live. Okay, uh, Washington, number six. Home Advisor found 2,674 photos with both the Washington State location tag and tiny living hashtag. About 16% of those photos were taken in Seattle. I totally get that. Uh, yeah, I totally get that. The city has been seized by a housing and affordability crisis, not to mention other things that are going on in Seattle right now. <laughs> and downsizing to tiny homes has been an economic necessity for many. It may be may become uh, an economic necessity for many more. <laughs> Good grief, what's going on? When is that mess going to get fixed? Who knows? Uh, Oregon, Oregon, yeah, I would t- see, see, these are the kind of states I would expect. Uh, Washington, Oregon, I mean, we're getting down to the lower numbers here, so maybe that may, all makes more sense. According to the Home Advisor report, tiny living is popular in cities known for the arts. Oregon may be number five on the list, but Portland comes out as most as the most popular U.S. city for tiny living with almost 700 photos. Austin, Texas, Sarasota, Florida are right behind it with 650, uh, and 546 photos, respectively. Residents in big cities like Portland may be driven to the tiny home movement due to the high cost of living associated with urban environments. Yeah, you've got crazy cost of living in places like Portland and Seattle. And, and it's all brought on by a bunch of liberal thinking that makes your taxes higher, your property taxes higher, your cost, all of this stuff, this insanity. And when these morons get out of mom and dad's basement at one point, they're like, you know what? I can't afford to live anywhere like normal people do. No. So I'm going to, you know, find a house on a trailer and it probably, you know, these, um, come on, let's be honest here. These photos are very nice homes and chances are most of the tiny homes are not this nice because they can't afford it. That's one of the big drawing cards of a tiny home. And this is one of the things, see, people have been very critical of tiny homes. I'm not so critical of tiny homes. I think for a couple, a normal couple getting started in life, Okay, young couple, young married couple. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It it keeps you from getting out of debt. You may even be able to find a small piece of land. It may be mobile. You might be able to move your home around in places. But even if you didn't, if you just want to find maybe just an acre, there's lots of places around, you know, even in the Ozarks, you can find an acre for sale or even less, maybe half an acre. And you can put a tiny home on it and be and not be in debt and not have a 30 year mortgage that you have, you have to be saddled with, uh, with an uncertain economy in your future. I mean, it makes perfect sense. But the reality is, of these, in this case here, I think Portland, Seattle, some of these other places here, you're talking about people who just can't afford anything because they just moved out of mom and dad's basement last week, and you know they have nowhere to go because the city of or the new country of Chop or Chaz or whatever it's being called now is about ready to be invaded by, you know, Navy SEALs and Army Airborne Rangers. Okay, number four, Texas. Nearly 7% of the Instagram posts scraped by Home Advisor and the ha- with the hashtag were in the Lone Star State. About 16% of the state's posts were located in Austin, Texas. A slew of tiny home communities has cropped up in recent years as Austin, like many U.S. metro areas, has grappled with a housing crisis. I think that Texas has grappled with most of California moving to it. And the increased regulation, the increased zoning, the increased property taxes, increased taxes in general, yeah, are plaguing Texas. And yeah, you have a huge issue. And so people are looking for cheaper alternative options. And um, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's it's an option. It's a cheaper alternative option. That looks, that looks like a really nice one. I like that one. That that's less than 400 square feet, I guess. Maybe that's really nice. Definitely bigger when you you know count the deck on that one. I, I really. An icon 3D printed tiny home in Austin, Texas. So this is a 3D printed home. How does that? I wonder. I wonder how it holds up to the weather. I mean, it must be in some. I don't know. Interesting. I find all that very interesting. Okay, number three, Colorado. Almost eight percent of all posts were in Colorado. 
Uh, there's an even an annual Colorado. See, this is another place I would expect tiny homes to be. A very progressive, liberal um, uh, state, and you know, I could I definitely see this and you know these things in Colorado. It makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. Makes perfect sense to me. As Denver Westward notes, the tiny home movement has gained traction in Colorado, specifically perhaps due to the variety of outdoor activities, skiing, all the, you know, lots of activities to do in Colorado outdoors. Uh, when tiny homeowners are saving money by downsizing, they're more so able to spend it on skiing and the like if they wish. Absolutely makes sense. Florida. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Could be. I mean, I, I, obviously this is what they found based on Instagram posts. But, I mean, how do they hold up to, like, hurricanes and things like that? Are they built that well, you know, to those kinds of standards? I don't know. But interesting. About 9% of those posts were in Orlando, where tiny house communities like Orlando Lakefront allow tiny homeowners to more easily park their house legally, as insiders Frank Alito reported. Sarasota, Florida is also the third most popular U.S. city for tiny living, according to the report. About 12% of the state's posts or 440, 546 were tagged in the city, Sarasota. All right, number one, California. Y'all knew that was coming. California. The Golden State is the most popular U.S. state for tiny living, for the tiny living movement, according to the report, with nearly 15.5% of the total posts scraped. Uh, there were high concentrations of tiny living posts tagged in Los Angeles, San Diego specifically. Totally makes sense. Um, I, I'm, I'm surprised... Uh, however, it seems like to me that the regulation and zoning ordinances, which are off the charts, property, I mean, again, property taxes makes, makes you want to have the ability to do a tiny home. You probably save a bundle on property taxes. Um, but zoning regulation, you know, I wonder how that plays a part in it. Anyway, um, there you go. California being the number one, not a big surprise, but curious nonetheless. What do you guys think about the tiny home movement? Uh, any of you guys out there live in tiny homes? Less 400 square feet or less, let me know. Leave a comment below. I'd love to be able to pick your brain apart on some of these ideas. Um, and, you know, how are you avoiding the zoning regulation? To Have you found a, a, a place that you can push your tiny home that is acceptable to the government in which you live, local government, state government, especially local municipalities? You know, some of them have a big problem with this. They don't like these tiny homes. Um, in fact, it's, it's come up a few times in our area uh, within the city, uh, that we, the town, I should say town, that we live closest to. Uh, they, they seem not to like them. Um, they think it drives down properties. It's just people who are set in their ways and they don't understand new trends. Uh, you know, change is scary. But, uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the tiny house movement. Again, for me, the way I see it, it's good for beneficial, could be beneficial for young couples, newlyweds, getting started out in life, um, maybe have a child on the way and then have to upgrade, uh, maybe pass down that house to someone else who's new. Um, it, it's, it's just a great way, I think, to avoid a lot of debt that you don't need early in life. All right. Next article, Wall Street Journal. Uh, for newly remote workers, small town USA will lose its allure soon enough. Lower taxes, question mark, cheaper housing, Shorter commute for some knowledge workers fleeing the big, that means white collar workers, by the way, knowledge workers. See, we don't use the word white anymore. That's racist. So we're going to call them knowledge workers. Fleeing the big city amid the pandemic, the perks of relocating to a distant burg will soon grow stale. America's smaller cities are finally getting their big break. Will it last? For decades, a handful of urban areas have attracted the lion's share of well-compensated knowledge workers. Again, knowledge it just blows my mind. For nearly as long, the rest have tried mostly in vain to compete. Tax incentives, cheap housing have occasionally convinced big companies to relocate their headquarters. But the hope for, hope for flood of bright young things rarely seem to follow. The COVID-19 pandemic seems to have changed that with the broader adoption of permanent work-from-home policies and a newfound appreciation for cheaper, more spacious surroundings. Many coveted knowledge workers, good grief, and really, I just, every time I say that, that phrase, it's just, have already made their move or are considering it. They might soon get homesick for the big city lights, though. Young people with the most valuable degrees have historically gravitated towards the major coastal cities and companies with the most competitive applicant pools hiring them disproportionately. 
more than 11% of Silicon Valley-based Google and Facebook, and more than 21% of New York-based Goldman Sachs employees are Ivy League graduates, for example, according to talent innovation company SHL. Now, many of these professionals want to pack up and take their lucrative jobs with them. Facebook Chief Executive Officer Mark Zuckerberg said recently that 75% of his employees have expressed some degree of interest in leaving the Bay Area. Oh, I can't imagine why. When people are pooping on the sidewalks, you know, I think I might want to find a new place to live. I don't know. Just perhaps. Meanwhile, a 2018 Bloomberg analysis of U.S. Census data showed more people were leaving New York City daily. I bet that's increased since this whole thing started. Uh, than any other U.S. city, the pandemic has predictably accelerated this trend. No, duh. Zillow and Redfin are both reporting spikes in single-family home searches in smaller cities, suggesting the exodus could be more than temporary. I mean, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is just painful. Um, the Captain Obviousness is off the scale at this point. Okay, cities have long tried to allure entire companies. In 2018, investment management firm Alliance Bernstein, Bernstein, Bernstein threatened to shake up the finance world when it announced it would move its headquarters to Nashville from New York City, citing benefits like lower cost of living, shorter commute times, and no state income tax. Last, late last year, J.P. Morgan was reportedly shrinking its Manhattan presence and even weighing selling its investment banking headquarters there. The Dallas area, also free of state income tax, has seen a recent influx of San Francisco-based companies moving to the area. Oh, that's the last thing people in Texas are like. Oh, yay, more tech, more people from San Francisco. Oh. <laughs> if you're in Texas, I'm telling you right now, it's time to jump ship. Jump ship and don't look back. That plate, that, that ship is going down to the bottom. Um, small cities have also attempted to lure individual workers in recent years. In 2017, the city of Lincoln, Kansas was actually offered. I remember this. I remember we even did a video, I think, on this. Um, it was on one of our, uh, our podcasts, Saturday Night Podcast. Uh, me and Jamie did. Uh, in 2017, the city of Lincoln, Kansas, was actually offering free land in a brand new subdivision on a first-come, first-served basis. The Remote Worker Grant Program in Vermont last year offered up to $10,000 over, over two years to select remote workers living full-time in the state. That trend is picking up steam amid the pandemic. In Kansas, the Choose Topeka Program is offering up to $15,000 for professionals to relocate. As a, and as of last week, Savannah, Georgia said it was offering $2,000 to tech workers who moved there. The key difference in the pandemic-induced wave of relocations could be that the movement is organic, led by employees themselves rather than their bosses. But even that could falter. Smaller towns away from buzzing business headquarters and bustling city life might struggle to retain their charm for transplants unless they attract a critical mass of big city refugees. While the promise of more land, more space, and less commute may sound compelling, and it is completely, I mean, that was one of the biggest things I hated living in St. Louis was the hour-long commute. I mean, on a Sunday morning, driving the same commute would take you 10, 15 minutes. But traffic, I mean, it was an hour-long plus commute. I could not stand it. I, it just, it makes you just want to die having to sit in traffic that long and, you know, spend two hours of your day stuck in traffic. Um, there is the threat of boredom or worse, or a worse fate for many career marginalization. Working away from main offices could also be more work than employees bargained for. S or Y Sekuo Burmese, an associate professor of management at the Macomb School of Business at the University of Texas at Austin, says his research has shown remote employees actually end up working more to compensate for lost face time. And they might not feel so much wealthier, so much wealthier after relocating. Companies like Facebook are planning to offer remote employees localized compensation. So that means because you live in a place with lower cost of living, well, we're going to pay you less. Because living in San Francisco is way more expensive because you have to deal with all the poop on the sidewalk. And that means you have to buy new shoes every so often. Uh, so we're going to pay you more. But if you live, you know, in Kansas... Lincoln, Kansas, well, there's not so much poop on the sidewalks, and so you don't have to buy shoes as often. New shoes, you don't have to buy that. So, yeah, we're going to pay you less. 
Well, commit, 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 commensurate. How can I not pronounce that word? I know that word. Compensation commensurate with a lower. I know I did not pronounce that word. I just I don't know what it is. With a lower cost of living. Meanwhile, the perks like free food, happy hours, and on-site childcare won't be available. Along with the in-person collaboration, big office settings also offer the ancillary benefits of friendship and even love, love at work. Mr. Burmese, Burmese, Burmese warns against major co- corporations trading office space for a, a remote workforce. Work, what is up? Workforce. Good grief. Noting its employees are going to be itching to get back together once the pandemic subsides. Indeed, a survey by Vault.com last year found last year that makes n- whatever survey you did last year, the world, if you haven't noticed, has turned completely on its head. So all of your surveys last year, throw them out, start over. Found out last year that 58% of workers had participated in an office romance at some point in their working lives. How many office romances do you think are going on right now? Again, probably better for families. Less affairs, less divorces. Okay, meanwhile, not everyone wants to leave the city. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg said 30% of his employees would prefer to move to another big U.S. city rather than a smaller one. The coronavirus could very well precipitate a temporary dispersion of America's top talent, but it isn't likely to stick. The gating factor preventing most smaller cities from growing may be that they are small to begin with. No one wants to make a city. Ambitious professionals want to be made by them. Interesting thoughts. So before we get to the comments below, because they are fantastic, um, I just, what do you think? I mean, for me, getting out of the city was goal number one. Goal number one. I wanted to get out of the city. I wanted to be able to have chickens. I wanted to be able to have livestock. I wanted to be able to, you know, not have a commute. I wanted to work from home or at least work in a small town, Have a, live in a small town or live near a small town, live in the woods. That was priority number one. But I realized that I'm an anomaly. So what about you guys? And I know also my audience is probably thinking along those lines too, if you're not there already. But I mean, I don't think that, I think there's a lot of allure to rural, more suburban areas. You, you have more freedom because in the cities, you're basically restricted and regulated to death. I don't know. That's just my way of thinking. I don't like regulation. I like liberty. I like freedom. I like the ability to move around in the middle of the night. If I wanted to, you know, go outside and not have to worry about getting mugged at 10 o'clock at night, you know, because I don't have to do that. I like the idea of, um, you know, collecting my, I like the idea of so much liberty and freedom. I leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Okay. Let's go ahead and get down to these, these comments because they are extraordinary. Uh, in 2020, returning Andrew Malone says, in 2020, returning to the city for the most efficient and effective professionals is an unlikely scenario, no matter what the author wishes to believe. Talent is global, and cities are repulsive collectives of the worst that humanity has to offer, and now they are disease-filled. But this is hilarious. And he quotes, along with in-person collaboration and big office settings also offer the ancillary benefits of friendship and even love at work. <laughs> People who think this way are always the least efficient and effective in any organization. Work is a social experience, not a vocation. No one with a serious adult life sees the office this way. The cost and all of the most limited resources in one's life is too high to continue this antiquated anthill mentality. Absolutely nails it. Andrew Malone absolutely nails it. So I can't, he's, he's so well put together. I can't even believe he subscribes to the wall street journal. He says he's a subscriber right there, but hats off to Andrew. Totally gets it. Um, this one too, I highlighted it. The attraction of the big city is Chacher La Femme. If you don't know what that means, it means, uh, looking for the woman it's French, uh, or La Homme, which means, um, man. So looking for the, looking for a woman, Chacher La Femme. I think it was, a. uh, uh, a store, what's her name? Um, the Gloria Estefan. Gloria Estefan, didn't she have a, it was a horrible song, by the way. Cherche la femme. And the probability of young people dying from COVID-19 is equivalent to being hit by lightning during their lifetime. Absolutely right. Guys, 
the survivability rate of this stupid thing is like 99.8%. 99.8%. Even the CDC says 99, 95%. But when you add in all the people who had the antibodies who had it and didn't even know it, it go, it's more like 98, 99.8% sur- survival rate. And we've destroyed an entire country because of it. Ridiculous. Uh, I love this one too. Michael Hand. Uh, warning. Warning to anyone contemplating moving from the big city to a, to a smaller place. We have guns and churches, and we know how to, we know how to use both of them. <laughs> uh, warning to anyone contemplating moving from the big city to a smaller place. We have guns and churches, and we know how to use both of them. So true. Joseph Robertson, with the values they have and the way they vote, I hope this is I hope this correct. This is correct, and they stay in place or move back. <laughs> Again, I love reading articles like this, and um, and the 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 comments are always the best. Article misses a lot; it's merely opinion. There have been a gradual shift out of the megacities even before the virus. The taxes, the filth, the homeless, and now defunded police—that will be fun. I suspect that gradual shift will be greatly amplified as more people realize they can work from wherever their home is. People are getting that. There are a lot of options in America, small and medium-sized towns with no shrinking, shrieking protesters or rioting or looting, just peaceful daily life. Yeah, that's a bonus. You know, you don't have to worry about getting pulled out of your car at the stoplight and beaten to death. You know, that's a perk. Will everyone leave large cities permanently? Of course not. Will, will a not insignificant number leave? I suspect there is a good chance. I talk to friends all over this country. A lot of people are quietly re-examining their lives right now, asking what is really important. Hmm. Let's see. Poop on the sidewalks, getting beat at the stoplight. Yeah, they're, you know, maybe we should reevaluate some things. It says big cities are an adrenaline rush, but they are really, but are they really worth it? Question mark. Absolutely outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. And and a lot of these. Uh, comments were exactly, I mean, they were just as amazing and, and dead on. So I found that absolutely fascinating. Let me know what you think here. Please uh, leave a comment below. Are you in the big city? Are you in the big city still? Are you planning to move to a rural area? Leave a comment below. I want to know. And be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I need that. I need that like before you go. I really appreciate the like. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the articles, and we'll see you next time on American Homestead. Hey, guys, I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.